tonight on airline, the pitfalls of international travel. The passengers who can't take off. They have to do a security check on the aircraft to make sure the man wasn't carrying a, a bomb or something. The passengers who've landed but whose luggage hasn't. We still don't know where our bags are. We still don't know how to get them and I still can't get in my home. And the passengers not even allowed on the plane. You take responsibility and you get us on the flight. Unfortunately, there is no unfortunate! Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away If you can use some exotic booze There's a bar in far Bombay Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away Rugby star Tony Underwood, capped 27 times for England. Tonight at the Grosvenor House Hotel in London, a testimonial dinner marks the end of that glittering career and the beginning of something new. Would you give a very big welcome to Tony Underwood? It's time to say goodbye to the game that made him famous. Have you been lucky enough to discover what what talent God has bestowed upon you to best express yourself. I did, but unfortunately it was in a young man's game. It's over now for me and much like saying it is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all, I must be glad that I was able to play the game of rugby and have discovered my gift in life. Renowned for flying down the wing when playing for England, Tony's new passion is flying planes. With a commercial pilot's license under his belt, he's been recruited by EasyJet. It was really a case of just one day looking up in the skies and sort of seeing these aeroplanes up there which go past near where I live and sort of it just it was really one of those sudden dawnings that, yeah, re rekindling those memories as a child of wanting to be up there at some stage. Over the last few months, Tony's been put through a tough training program, but he still faces the ultimate challenge. Very soon, he'll be in the cockpit. But tonight, while he enjoys his testimonial dinner, there are other challenges for the EasyJet team. They told us an hour delayed. We made, we made inquiries over the phone. At Luton, sales desk agent Leslie Cassidy is dealing with a group of passengers who've arrived too late to check in for the evening flight to Amsterdam. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people, nine people that have been told that they could, if it was delayed, um, get on it. This company has a different policy from all the other companies. And uh, if they continue this way, they will lose all their passengers. I, that's not sure. I would li like you to come down because they're, uh, well, fair, to be honest, I mean, if it's a little bit delayed, I can't understand why they can't get them on either. OK, thank you. Bye. The supervisor that is coming right down to see you because, to be honest, I refuse to tell you the bad news that you can't get on. It's not looking good. Leslie's tactical withdrawal comes just in time. We are going to be on that flight. I warn you, we are going to be on that flight because we were told by your own people yes. that we were okay. So you take responsibility and you get us on the flight. Unfortunately, there is no unfortunate. You are unfortunate because you are going to have to bother to get us on the right. flight. The that is your problem. There. We don't have a problem, you have a problem. There is no need to shout there, like that. No, I shout because yeah. it is so easy, you should not have been told that. So, I unfortunately you that. for no, you, you we were you told tell that. Furious at their lack of progress, the passengers aren't going to let the duty supervisor off the hook. You are working for EasyJet. Your colleagues of EasyJet told us we could be on the flight. So I think you should take responsibility and just get well, us on the flight. Well, unfortunately, we cannot get you on that flight now. Give a good reason. Give a good reason. The reason is that we, you still need to check on, on time. Oh, even are you a school flight, class? Are you a kindergarten? Even what even are you? Flight, even if the flight is delayed, you still need to check on time. That is rubbish. Then they that know, is wait rubbish. a minute. Because the aircraft is still I understand up. that is a rule. The amount of passengers and bags that are on board. And because you haven't checked in on time, you are not in that head count. You would be right if your colleagues wouldn't have told us different. 
thing we can do is get you onto tomorrow's. Oh, oh what a wonderful oh, solution! Oh, Come on, oh, what a wonderful solution! No, that's We're impossible. May I ask a very simple question? You may. Why do you mistreat your passengers? The way you do, because you know that you're going to be an hour late. We don't mistreat Just as a, you mistreat there. your passengers. You time, know, sorry, let me finish my sentence. You know well ahead that this flight is going to be late. And yet, like a bunch of kindergarten leaders, you shut that gate on the time that you were going to shut it anyway. The lady that was sitting there said, Amsterdam is shut. If, but she was sitting but there. But she was sitting there, the lady. <laughs> Can, so you, you are can, only you talking rubbish. You no, like, because you're talking because rubbish. You can okay, shout at me all there, you like. I've tried tonight. my best right. to get you, you on that flight. You have tried nothing. But what time you have tried you nothing. Flight. Having failed to break the deadlock with the duty supervisor, the passengers decide to raise the stakes. They've come up with a plan guaranteed to cause mayhem. 200 miles away in Liverpool, the Malaga flight should be taking off. But instead, everyone's being offloaded. One of the passengers has had a panic attack. He was dizzy, he didn't feel like travelling. And he got, he decided to come off the flight and when he got off the flight he took one bag off with him. And passengers on board the plane were convinced that he got on with two. And because of this, they had to take all the passengers off and get them to identify because you can't let a flight go if someone, this passenger, you know, he could have left a bag on me. Once I got on the plane, oh, everything went round and sat down. Claustrophobic feeling, you know. I'm not so bad now that I've got off again. But I thought I'd better tell them uh, in case I collapsed on the flight or something like that, you see. Bill Sharp recently lost his wife, and this was to be his first flight since his bereavement. I've been many times to Malaga. I'd count absolutely countless, could be a hundred times in the past. But always the two of us, the wife and me, you see. And I thought, so, we know people there as well. And I thought, on my own, well, I would be all right. But no, no, no good. And you're with someone else, it's rather different, on your own, uh, with this sort of thing, a stress condition and panic attacks, it's, uh, it really gets to you, yeah. At the departure gate, the rest of the passengers are waiting to get back on board. And then a man on the plane had a panic attack, so we're all now off the aircraft so they can check it. Because they have to do a security check on the aircraft to make sure the man wasn't carrying a, a bomb or something that would cause us all to have a panic attack. No criticism of EasyJet whatsoever. Prevention is better than cure. I'd rather get there alive than go bang. But equally, I quite fancy having a pee. <laughs> The passengers must hold on a little bit longer while the plane is checked to make sure Mr. Sharp left nothing behind. In Luton, it's time for the Amsterdam passengers to take action. They're going to try to get on their flight by barging past security. No, we don't have it, but the flight is delayed. Sorry, the flight is delayed. But they don't get very far. A wall of security guards blocks their path and no amount of arguing will get them through. We will be arrested. <laughs> With no way past the guards, the plan to storm through to departures has come to an abrupt end. The passengers are escorted back to the EasyJet sales desk. <laughs> Security in Liverpool have also dealt with their problem. They've searched the Malaga flight, but there's no sign of Mr. Sharp's extra bag. There wasn't one. It just appeared like he had two bags, but he didn't, he only had one. What it was, I think, was it was like this. When I went to the plane, I had my coat like that and that bag like that, you see? And someone thought it was an extra bag. That must have been the way it was. With the mystery solved and the passengers back on the plane, Mr Sharp is already planning his next flight to Malaga. She's got me another flight now on the 2nd of January, so I'll uh, get myself improved by then, hopefully. I'll do it again. Go prepared with some tranquilizers or something next time. OK. Back in Luton, an unexpected change of plan. 
it seems the Amsterdam passengers will be flying tonight after all. It is still a mystery to us what brought about the sudden turnaround because the manager came after we waited for 10, 15 minutes, finally she came. And she told us very surprisingly that there would be an extra plane going to Amsterdam tonight, outside of the normal schedule. As angry as I was before, I could have kissed her on both cheeks because I don't want to stay. And EasyJet don't want him to stay either. So with an extra flight going to Amsterdam this evening, the band of passengers who try to breach airport security are on their way. I do feel sorry for them. They're stuck there with no money. They got no money. Between them, they have 10 pounds. Coming to the scary end of the training, it's sort of, it's all been like, yeah, great, I'm going to fly an aeroplane, but it's really coming to the point now where it's actually going to happen. At Luton Airport, it's a day of fancy dress and face painting. Staff and passengers alike are getting into the spirit of the occasion. But one couple who've flown in from Amsterdam are not in the mood for fun and games. We've got in and our bags aren't here. We've come to baggage handlers and asked for some help. They've sent us up here just fobbing us off. We've then come to the cashless who knows nothing about it. They know nothing about how to deal with this. They know nothing about it. She's now running around trying to find a radio. So they know not how to deal with the situation. They've told us now, I have no car keys, no flat keys, no home keys, that we've just got to sit here and we don't know whether they're going to get on the next flight or not. Because we still don't know where our bags are. We still don't know how to get them and I still can't get in my home. The prospect of being stranded at the airport is too much for passenger Gemma Robinson. We don't normally deal with it up here. It normally gets put through to read out. So absolutely nobody knows anything about anything. If no, you know no, how to take someone's money. Would you like to listen to the young lady who explain Yeah, yeah, first. no, I'd love to. I am just trying to find out. Person. We don't normally deal with vinyl stockage ourselves. Read aviation deals with for us. Can you find out someone who does? Yeah. Because we, this is like the third person we've been to now. Okay. Former rugby star Tony Underwood is in his last week of training before he takes to the skies. Today, it's airline security. i uh, just tell you a little bit about myself. I'm cabin crew. I started the first session is being run by trainer Des Perinara. My main background, though, is in entertainment. I was in entertainment for eight years, uh, doing song and dance, doing theatre shows. What I'd like to do now is get a little bit of background on you all so that I I know where you're coming from. Tony. Uh, came from the world of entertainment as well. I need more entertainment. Yeah, it wasn't song and dance either. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I tried the old uh, night for a few times. Yeah. Good on you. Um, yeah, uh, first job in aviation, so just come out of training and looking forward to it. Good yeah. Excellent. Cheers. The purpose of the week we're about to go into is to introduce you to safety and emergency procedures. and. Uh, that can range from anything from first aid to dealing uh, with uh, emergency scenarios, uh, hijacking, or how to recognise a bomb, just what's involved in it, dealing with smoke and fire. And these are different types of, of plastic explosives. This is gel ignite. So you can pass that around and have a smell. This is all very new for me and you know, very naive with these things. You know, they talk about plastic explosives. I don't know whether you know, you're talking about a, a gallon full of the stuff or uh, you know, a couple of ounces. Okay, we're talking about suspect packages. This could be left on board. If you look into the back of it, again, plastic explosive, detonator, power source, and a timer. An explosive just a little bit bigger than this was responsible for the Lockerbie. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. At Liverpool Airport, Supervisor Lian Chung is having communication problems. Are you flying tomorrow? Tomorrow. Have you changed it already? I'm have problem with visa. Yeah. yeah. So have you spoke to somebody who's getting you a visa for tomorrow? Tomorrow we. It turns out these would-be passengers are fishermen from the Ivory Coast. Their trawler ran aground on sandbanks in the Irish Sea off Blackpool. It capsized and sank. All 13 crew members escaped unhurt. Some have remained in Blackpool, but these two men now want to return to their home in Spain. All the details and their belongings have obviously gone down with the boats. 
but they, had, they came as a group of four and two of them had a residency card for Spain but these two gentlemen don't have any do documentation whatsoever. The men believe replacement visas will be sent to the airport in time for tomorrow morning's flight. But Leanne's worried about what they're going to do tonight. So where are you staying tonight? Hmm? Do you have somewhere to stay? Here? Hotel. 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 Just take a seat for five minutes. I'll shout okay. you in a minute. Okay. Okay, just so five, five minutes. I'm not prepared to let them travel without documentation because they can arrive there and then just be sent back and it's no problem to them over there to do that but it's the person at the other side because obviously it's our mistake if we let them go and they're not, they just can't travel without documentation. The stranded fishermen wait patiently while Leanne makes some inquiries. In Luton, Gemma's patience is running out. What I need you to do then is promise that you'll come back and communicate with us. Because for 45 minutes, nobody has. If you give me one second, please, I'll get on the phone good. to the okay. gentleman now. One second. Okay, it's good. Okay. It's good. Well, it's good. Is, well, it's getting a bit boring. 40 minutes is very, very appalling. It took you five minutes to take my money for the ticket. Yeah, what should I tell the passenger? Passenger service agent Christina Surrey is on the trail of Gemma and Philip's bags. All I've been trying to get done, right, is that they ring, ring Amsterdam to find out where our bags are, and then once they've found out where they are, then they put them on the next flight. It's taken this long for them even to make the phone call. There's no news of the fishermen's visas in Liverpool, so Leanne calls in Spanish-speaking check-in agent Vanessa Fonseca to help unravel the mystery. We don't know anything. They couldn't travel. They've got no paperwork or anything? No. He said, if you, they don't have a work permission, they won't get a visa, so they need to go to the Spanish embassy in Manchester and see what can happen and tell them that they won't be able to travel. Vanessa investigates further by talking to the fishermen and discovers that the company they work for has misled them about their visas. The person who was responsible told them, oh, it's no problem, you can travel to Spain. He booked the fly tickets, they actually paid for a taxi to, to take them to the airport. And basically, I think he just wanted to get rid of them. And I called him and I said, no, they need a visa to travel to the country. And he said, oh, really? He said, well, um, I think they've got two visas waiting for them in Malaga Airport. And I called the Spanish embassy and they said, we'd never do that. You always have your visa and your passports. Because you can't just travel from an airport to the other with no visas. So they're stuck there with no money. they got no money. Between them, they have 10 pounds. I do feel sorry for them. I think they'd be my bill light too. So I'm just going to try to find out if I can. Uh, make them go home or somewhere to stay. At EasyJet's training center in Luton, Tony Underwood's next lesson is in first aid. I'll go and inform the flight deck, okay, and Thank get you, you the first aid kit. Thank you. How are you, madam? You alive? Yes. Hello, hello. No response. Good. Check in the mouth. Good, excellent. Check for breathing. No As he nears the end of his ground-based training, Tony faces the prospect of flying an EasyJet plane for the first time. Hold your mouth over hers. Excellent. Coming to the scary end of the training, it's sort of, it's all been like, yeah, great, I'm going to fly an aeroplane, but it's really coming to the point now where it's actually going to happen, and it's, this reality beckons, and it's sort of getting quite scary, but uh, exciting at the same time, obviously. Check circulation. Is there circulation? No circulation. There is no circulation, so you got In a, a week's problem. time, he'll have to carry out a series of test flights. That could mean up to 15 takeoffs and landings in short succession. I don't know what I'll be like next week. I mean, you know, it's just going up the steps itself into a 737, actually knowing you're in an aircraft itself and having all round vision, etc., and and the noises and everything and you know, just real time will just be quite an amazing event. And the week after that, due to have uh, passengers in the back as well. Those poor souls. <laughs> That's it. Brilliant, you can resuscitate me. How did that feel? Because it was the first time you've ever done that. Her mouth is bigger than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> back in the terminal, there's some bad news about the missing bags. Yeah. Talk to the Lords at Amsterdam Airports and they said it might not even be an easy jet flight. So, as soon as they locate your bag, 
and so if it's gone, if it's in another country, it's got to be flown back, then couriered. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's quick, as I say, obviously, um, once it's flown back here, we can get it out to you within, within the hour. EasyJet estimate they carry 8,000 pieces of luggage every day, and it's inevitable that one or two bags go astray. Once the loss is reported, the airline passes details on to their baggage handlers, who use a computerized system to trace which airport it's ended up in. But so far, they haven't tracked down Philip and Gemma's luggage. Up to now, they have no idea where our bags are. Which I think is laughable, when it can't even be in the same bloody airline. Let alone not on an easy jet flight. Now I've got to go and explain this to Gemma. <laughs> That'd be fun. As Philip expects, Gemma is not impressed with this latest piece of news. Oh, that's great. So there's absolutely nothing they can do. They can just take your personal belongings and just lose <laughs> them anywhere in the world, and that's OK. Fine. Perfect. No money. I recommend you buy a flight with EasyJet. It's a very good company to fly with. <laughs> as long as you don't want to keep your luggage afterwards. All right. Smash it. Meanwhile, the two fishermen, who will never see their belongings again, are still waiting at the sales desk, hoping to fly home tomorrow morning. Vanessa's not so optimistic. I don't know how they're going to do it. Poor they expect sort of paperwork coming through, maybe some visas, I don't know, but that's what they said to me. But what I'm worried about is that that visa won't be able to be done by tomorrow because, I mean, you know, it's not enough time. And I spoke from the Spanish embassy, and it's impossible. I think they'll get the paperwork in the end, but obviously it's not there at the moment, so we can't let them travel. And then they get there, they'll just get sent back, and we'll get fined. And obviously there's consequences involved in something like that. So we we wouldn't we weren't able to do what they wanted us to do. But I think they were quite happy with the fact that we were being helpful with them. They've been transferred to tomorrow's flight, and we're just awaiting documents now. <laughs> The men finally decide to return to a hotel in Blackpool, where two other crew members from the capsized trawler are staying. They plan to come back in the morning, hoping that by then, their visas will have turned up. Despite rebooking his ticket, Bill Sharp has still not managed a flight to Malaga. Gemma and Philip went home with a friend and picked up some spare keys. Their bags turned up three days later, after being sent to the wrong address and the two fishermen were never seen at Liverpool Airport again. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in far Bombay. Come fly with me. Let's fly, let's fly.